Hello. Today we're going to look at question 2 from the January 2014 WJC Unit 2 A-Level Physics paper. The first question asks us what are longitudinal waves. So longitudinal waves are waves in which the vibrations are parallel to the direction the wave travels. Next in the question, two students, Alan and Brynn, are investigating the spreading of sound waves passing through a gap which has got a width of 0.3 metres. And we have a diagram showing the setup of their experiment, including a sound intensity metre. The name given to this spread in effect of waves is diffraction. Be very careful with the spelling. It's D I F F R A C T I O N. It doesn't look very good the way I spelt it there, so let's try that again. D I F F F R A C T I O N. Examiners can be a little bit petty sometimes, and if you spell it diffraction, they won't give you the mark because it's too similar to the word refraction. The question then continues with a graph. This graph shows the intensity of the sound waves at all angles from minus 90 to 90 degrees of the semicircle on the previous diagram. And it's important to note that we get a large intensity sound at each of those angles. So that means there's a large amount of diffraction happening. And for a large amount of diffraction to happen, the wavelength of the waves must be larger than the gap that we're trying to pass through. The general rule is we get lots of diffraction if the gap is a wavelength or smaller in size. Now Alan and Bryn have read the signal generator's frequency differently. Alan thinks it's 375 hertz and Bryn thinks that it's 3750 hertz. And we're going to use this fact about diffraction to work out which student is right. So let's first of all do a calculation for Alan. We're going to work out the wavelength that the speed of sound, uh, sorry, that the sound wave would have if he was correct. So we're going to use the speed of sound formula lambda is c over f, c being 340 meters per second as given in the question and the frequency 375 hertz. Putting that into the calculator gives us an answer of 0.91 meters. For Bryn we could do exactly the same calculation just changing the frequency to 3750 hertz but if we understand the proportionality there's inverse proportionality between wavelength and frequency and because Bryn's frequency is 10 times larger than Allen's, his wavelength will be 10 times smaller, and hence 0.091 metres. Remember what we said, that the wavelength needs to be larger than the size of the gap. Allen's wavelength is, Bryn's isn't, so Allen is correct. because his wavelength is greater than a 0.3 meter gap. In the final part of the question, the students set up a different experiment where they send sound waves towards a board and they detect a system, a pattern if you like, of alternating maxima and minima as they move their sound sensor in between A and B. The key to this question is to realize that what they've done is set up a standing wave because they've got two identical waves traveling through each other in opposite directions. So let's say that a standing wave is produced by the superposition of the original wave, the original sound, and the reflected sound. It's possibly worth mentioning here that the minima that they detect are where the two waves, the incident and the reflected waves, actually arrive permanently in antiphase, but it's not actually needed for the mark scheme. The question also asks us to work out what the wavelength of the sound waves are. Well, if we realize that the maxima are antinodes and the minima are nodes, then the distance between a node and an antinode is actually a quarter of a wavelength. 
and that distance in the question is 35 millimeters. So fairly logically the wavelength is 35 times 4 which is 140 millimeters. Thank you for listening.